Hello again everybody and welcome to the channel. Now in today's video I'm going to show you how you can effortlessly switch between banks of input effects so you can concentrate more on your delivery of your performance and speed up the looping process without having to manually go into your increase and decrease of your FX banks. Now you've probably noticed a couple of extra bits and bobs down there, I'll cover those in another video, but we'll be focusing mainly on just how to get more efficient with our with our looping by being able to switch between banks of effects without having to do this manually and it's more of an automatic process. Now before we get started, do consider subscribing to the channel to stay in the loop as we do cover all things RC600 and give the video a thumbs up if you found it valuable. As always, I really do appreciate your support folks and I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone who's bought me a coffee at the link below, donated a super thanks towards the channel or everyone who even sends messages of support, thank yous, likes, etc. It really does mean a lot and it helps me to keep making um, this content for you all, so thanks again. Now, I'll talk you through an example first of all and then I'll show you the way I do things, which is very simple but just, just helps me to toggle between my banks of input effects efficiently and with ease. So let's get to it. Now everything in this memory, which is memory 50, is exactly the same as it is out of the box, except for a couple of things that I've changed, and I'll talk you through those in a minute. So I've pre-selected a few input effects, as you can probably see. I've got some different input effects there. You can see input effect bank C. I've got some different effects there. And I'll um, I'll show you that why I've switched them all on. Um, it's very important that we have them all on, um, because when we change between our banks, we want to make sure that we're ready to go, and we don't have to manually switch them on uh, that way. So you can see I've got an input effect C selected there. I'm just going to press loop twice, go to my input effects, and then just switch to a different bank. We might as well start with A. And you can see I've got a couple of effects there switched to on. So it's important to know that you can only use one bank of effects at a time. So this means that when I've got bank A selected, all the effects from banks B, C, and D are off. And then when I move to bank B, then bank A switches off, etc. just in case you were unaware. So for the pur purpose of this video, I've got track one here, track two here, and track three. So let's pretend I'm going to record a percussion track on track one, let's say a cajon. Um, I've got this minor pickup cajon here, so that can just go into an instrument input. And let's say I've, I'm going to use um, some dynamics and reverb, so com com some compression and reverb on my first instrument on track one, which is my cajon. And then on track two, I plan to record a guitar to bass effect. So if I just talk you through what input effects I've selected for the second bank, which is bank B, I've got my preamp, a transpose, and a G2B. So if you've not seen my other video on how to achieve a decent guitar to bass effect, I will leave a link up here so you can access that and also link in the description below. So that's going to be on track two. And then on track three, I plan to use... Um, let's go to bank C for this one, and I'm going to be using a clean guitar tone with some delay and reverb. Now, I won't go through um, how to send effects to each of your instruments independently in this video, but do click up here again, somewhere, to check out how to do this. I have made a video previously, and I'll leave all the videos um, that could be useful, such as how to route instruments um, properly. Um, depending on what your setup obviously but I'll leave those in the links uh, the links to those in the description below so a lot of people might think that their only option to switch between banks whilst performing would be to manually do this and what I've done is I've just changed pedals 5 and 6 on mode 2 to a an increase and a decrease of my effects bank so you can see those on the screen there now let's say you were recording track 1 and you've got your input effect A selected, and then you want to play that. Oops, you want to play that track back, and then you then want to go across and select bank B because you want to go and record your second track, which in this case is my guitar to bass. And then you want to go over to bank C and then record your third track. Now that's quite a long-winded way of doing things. So we're going to spice it up a little bit and use some assigns. So we're going to set up a couple of assigns just to help us um, automatically change between our banks of effects. So we're going to press menu twice and you've got your assigns here. And I've actually used one and two already because I've got my bank increase and decrease um, set to pedals five and six on mode two. So I'm going to go straight to assign number three. 
And I'm going to change this first one to track one because I want to use this pedal to move up to the next bank of effects. So that's track one and it's set to play stop. That's important. I don't want to use pedal, pedal one mode one or I don't want to use track one record dub. It has to be play stop just so that I can record on this track first of all. And then when I play the track back, then that's when it moves up to the next bank of effects. So I'm going to switch to toggle and then I'm going to change this to, it's going to be input effects bank increase because I want to move from bank A to bank B using this pedal. So important as well, when I go over here, I have to turn the, the assign on. I always forget and then I wonder why it's not working. So I'll just turn this one on first and then I'll go into this and this one I want to be track because I want to move up from this one now. So it's going to be track two, play stop, switch it to toggle, move across. And again, I want it to be an input effect bank increase. So I want this one to move from A to B, banks A to B, and this one to move from banks B to C because I'll finally record bank on bank C using bank C on track three. So now we've got our assigns set up. So I'm going to record my cajon on this part first. So let's say I'm recording my cajon. You can see it's still input effect bank A for my compression and reverb for my cajon. And when I play this one back, that's now moved to bank B and I'm ready to go for my guitar to, back, uh, guitar to bass effect for track two. So let's record on track two. You can see it's bank uh, input effect bank B selected. And when I play this one back, eventually when the loop syncs up, now it's gone to input effect C. So I'm now ready to record my guitar part using input effect bank C. And I've got no assigns to this one because I'm just gonna play guitar for the rest of this, um, this performance. This is great if you wanted to change banks without having to worry about manually doing the bank increase and de decrease as mentioned earlier. But again, it won't work for everyone simply because if you plan on stopping or starting those tracks again, tracks one and two, um, during your performance, then that means you're going to be toggling between your banks of input effects during that performance. And then that might be something that you don't want to do. Now, I don't really need to worry about that for my current setup, which I will talk you through now. Basically, if I just go to um, my new multi um, setup here uh, on memory number 51. So it's completely different to the way that I set things up initially, as we all sort of learn how to get on with these things. So this is the, the, the way that I've set things up now. I'm on mode two, so let's go back to mode one. If you if you are interested in in figuring out or finding out how I do things now with my with my current multi mode, then stick a comment below and I will make a video for you in the future. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you basically what I've what I've got is I've got track six here and I've got track three here, and that's simply just because the numbers match um, the buttons there, so it's easier for me if I've got track six and three, and I know when I'm setting things up that I've got track six and three up here. So what I tend to do now is I record my cajon on um, track number six. So I'll press record here. And then that one, when I play it back with my assign, it then moves to my uh, different bank of effects so that I can record a shaker or I can sing straight into track three. So here's a quick example. I've got memory 52, which is with or without you selected, and I've got input effect bank B turned on straight away when I select that particular memory. So now I record my cajon, which has got some compression and reverb on it. So let's say I'm recording my cajon. And when I play that one back now, that will, that will change to input effect A, which is straight ready to go with my vocal microphone. So I've got some compression and reverb turned on there. Um, and I actually use a shaker for this one, just set to one measure. So I've got my shaker and then that just plays that one back and I've still got bank A selected, ready for me to start singing. So that's it for today, everybody. I hope you found the video useful. And if so, subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop, give it a like, and you can support the channel at the various links below. And as always, folks, I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta.